Welcome to Keep Me Up It, where I'll be discussing the social and personal connections to our being because our value matters. So we need to talk about those things that define us, those things that need to praise us, helping you discover new concepts to help you develop. And I promise this is going to be educative, informative, and interesting. You wouldn't want to miss any of our episodes. And if you do, you can always come back for a replay. It's all for free. Just please subscribe to this channel and I'll share among your loved ones. And also follow us on our Instagram page. Keep me up with. Are you ready for today's episode? Let's ride. My name is Tony Ann. Today I'm talking about waiting periods. What are waiting periods? Why are waiting periods? Why is it so irresistible not to experience waiting periods? Why has it become so inevitable not to experience this moment? How do we live through this moment? How do we maintain and sustain throughout of this moment? What are the things we need to do? What are the things we need to understand? How do we brace and shape our personality during and after this moment? These are all the things I'll be talking about today. And I hope you come prepared as you're about to discover some new concepts to help you redefine your life. Let's ride. Waiting periods are those times in our lives challenges are faced, pressures and difficulties arise, negativity seeming to be a fix because of our effort as in youth productivity, the goals, aims, commitment in few seems to be nothing. To the extent we are tempted to give up, why is waiting period inevitable for human beings? Because it's a phase we all have to pass through. Just like change, just like development, just like progress, just like expectations, just like the ideas we create, they are phases we need to pass. But what do we subject ourselves to when we are in this moment? Do you see yourself being present within of yourself? Do you see yourself worthy of the existence you are to experience. Because these are moments you face a whole lot of difficulties, so much confusion, temptations of giving up, of losing yourself. And once you lose yourself, you lose to existence, you lose to life, you lose everything. So waiting periods are those conviction times. We need to... We need to understand certain things about ourselves. Who am I to me? Who am I to what I'm doing? Who am I to my surroundings? These are appropriate questions you need to ask yourself. Nothing is promised easy and nothing is guaranteed for winning. We all strive. We all strive and try to live through to have a breakthrough. Challenges are, is the most guaranteed thing in life. Winning is not guaranteed. Losing is not guaranteed. That's why winning and losing is a 50-50 chance. But you can make each of them a 100% chance for you. Who says it's going to be easy? Who says it's not going to be, to be tough? Who says there are not going to be challenges? Who says it's not going to be difficult? Who says you're not going to fail? And the way it works for each and every one of us comes differently. Some people fail about 10 times before they get it right. It's not because they are doing irrelevancies or they are not being consistent. It's about bracing yourself when you are in this moment. Does waiting period mean you have to stop or you have to wait or you have to quit? No. Why are waiting periods and existence in human ecosystem? As vital as our choices are to survive, it's in the best interest for everyone to invest the congesting magicals for expectations. We need to start decongesting how we project things for expectations. If your projection into expectation is overnight success, overnight stardom, you are going to be in confusion when challenge time comes. 
because you will be incapable to handle yourself during this moment. So it's most important to decongest magicals for expectations. There's a difference in you dreaming big and projecting magicals into your expectations. Dreaming big is about you structuring an idea, having ideals to those ideas that, okay, this is what I'm looking up to. This is what I'm looking up to be in the next 20 years. But when I talk about projecting magicals into your expectations, that is about results. Now, we all know that whenever we put effort into something, we expect results. What kind of result are you expecting? Are you trying to um, make an arrow high quick just because you invested so much? What's the guarantee that you are even going to earn anything at all? When I published my first book, I didn't earn half of what I invested in publishing that book. But I was not bothered by it. What I was concerned for was my book getting to the appropriate audiences. And the audiences responding back to me that this is what they learned so far from the book. I was open to their suggestions. I was open to their opinions. I was open to their advices. And the time that I published my book, I had to, f I had to experience a phase at the same time. It almost got me to stall in selling my book that I had put in so much work into. But then I asked myself, what is the most important thing right now? Is it a problem that I'm facing? this effort that I have made. So we mustn't lose interest in ourselves just because we are going through a phase. It's a phase, it's going to pass. But when it passes, what are you going to fall back to? What are you going to sow your hope in possibility hat? It's very important because for the conviction of refining oneself, challenges must be present. It must be faced. Progress is like an ocean of varieties. Your interest in any of its resources becomes your result. So if you look at progress in the way it's so vast, in the way that it's so wide, you can get confused if you are not consistent with your interest. If you are always covetous of everything, like this, you want this, you want that, you'll get confused. And when this challenges time, challenging time comes, you might find it so difficult to be in control of your emotions, to be able to call yourself to attention of what is the conviction you got so far? So these are moments that are very confusing. I understand. These are difficult times. Times you've just lost your job. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Or you just you, you are going through a dropout situation from school. You've just failed your papers. You've put in so much effort in for the exam and you have to repeat another year in school. You've just lost your parent. You've lost a child. You've lost a wife. You've lost a husband. These are trying times, but you mustn't lose yourself to these times because these are phase we all have to pass through. Either we try or we don't try, we have to pass through these times. And they come and they will go. But when they go, what are you left with? What can you fall back on? 
What is the conviction that you got about yourself? The success will weep over. What's the guarantee that we have longevity for it? That's why your existence is not necessary for every of the objectives you make. And neither is every of your objective a necessity in your existence. It's not everything in your objective that will become a need. And it's not all of your needs that will yield productivity. So the ones that don't yield productivity accept it as something that is not valuable to your existence. The things that is valuable to your existence are those things you will impart to the world, you impart to others, you lay as legacy, you build a succession and pass it on. So these are things you can keep check of the progress. Waiting periods are times we will pass through. They come and they will go. But when they go, what are you left with? How much of a person are you? What have you been able to instill in yourself? What have you been able to digest and practice and impact? Because life is about experiencing the freedom and impacting. It's not your comfort zone. So every of your challenges will come and go. So you don't have to seclude comfort during this time. My question is, do you quit existing because of the face? How do you survive delusions during waiting periods? Your mind manifests what your brain feeds on. Your mind envisions what your brain picks. Your mind visualizes what your brain does. Your mind is that workstation that your brain looks up to. Your brain has no function of itself without the mind. So what you project with the mind, what you process with the mind. And don't forget, you process things with your mind. Your brain just hacks. So don't get confused that you process things with your brain. There is something that your brain taps from, and that's your mind. Your mind is very powerful. It's very strong. So you need to be careful how you process your mind. It reflects in how your brain acts. So don't create an habit pattern of comforting yourself in seclusion. Don't box yourself in just because there is a face you are experiencing. There are challenges. There are difficult times. These are times you are feeling pain and you just felt that because of this so much pain, you need to just hide. You need to just box yourself up. It's not to be like that. When you do like that, you are making yourself more delusional. You are self-destructing yourself. The whole essence of survival is freedom and must be experienced as such. Why I love talking about experiencing things is that's how humanly you should be. That's how humanly you should be. And you must instill in yourself that life is not about you comforting yourself. It's not your comfort zone. Life is to be experienced. It's to experience the adventure and impact. After you've experienced this adventure, you must impact. It's about give and take. When they talk about give and take, you've received this uh, adventure of life. So what are you giving back into life? And what you can give back into life is impact. When you give finances, it gets exhausted. But when you give education, it lives on. These are things to pass on. And education comes in different ways. 
Be careful how you project things to people's mind. Be careful how you relate things with people. So by impact, you are doing yourself some relevancies and you are doing a lot of people relevancies. And that's because your existence is attached to someone's development by impact. It necessarily doesn't mean that without you, they can develop. But there is a purpose of you existing in life that is attached to their own purpose too. So they must meet. They must occur. So even during waiting period, being delusional is being selfish. Because you're just thinking about yourself alone. You just want to experience the whole good things. You're not even thinking about how you are going to experience these good things and give back. So being delusional is selfish on its own. Self-destructing is being selfish. Because when you destroy yourself inwardly, you are automatically destroying the impact that is meant for other people. So you are not only destroying yourself, you are destroying the impact other people are looking up to. The whole essence of survival is freedom, and everybody must experience it. The reason I talk about experiencing things is because that's how humanly anyone should and can be. You can be defected by how confused you are. That's why you mustn't lose your interest no matter how trying the times are, no matter how challenging these moments are, no matter how difficult these moments are, you mustn't lose the interest in yourself so you don't get confused. Because the more confused you are, the more defected you will be. It's more, it's more likely how your vision is going to be darkened. That's why connecting with your God talks about interest in all ramification. When you don't lose interest in yourself, no matter how trying the times are, you will survive it. And you don't get stuck in this paradox. When I say so your hope where it is possible, this is what I mean. And it's because trying times sheds light what's needful in your objectives. But can you identify with this conviction? Can you recognize yourself after these trying times have passed? What are you falling back to? What are you standing with? What is left for you now? These are the things you must think about during these times. Not to stay delusional. Because when you stay delusional, you are unable to think ahead. You are stuck in your feelings. You feel it all over. You think you can't be worthy of surviving success. You think you can't be worthy of achieving success, you think you can be worthy of breaking through. Your capabilities are wonders to you surviving freedom. How do you imitate progress? Humans are moved by needies. We are moved by our necessities. We are moved by the impression of deserving them. Either, either by receiving or by giving. But there's a saying of those who imitate the act of impact get celebrated and recognized. So when you imitate, when you impact so much, you allow your impact lifestyle to be more than your request lifestyle. It allows you to be celebrated and recognized because you are not doing it based on the fact that people 
want that impression, but you are doing it because you are okay with it. It's what your mind manifested for your brain. It's what you are just free with. It's what you've allowed yourself to experience. So by impacting, you don't develop this attitude of secluding yourself in a box. You are imitating progress because when you impact other people, you are keeping progress in check. When you impact someone, you want to keep check on them. How well are you doing in this space? Are you having issues? If you have issues, how can I help? How can I help support? How can I uplift your spirit so that you don't give up? This is the whole essence of impacting. So when you experience the adventures of life, you must be willing to impact. You must be willing to give back. Because this way you are recognized and celebrated. Celebrated for the fact that you are impacting lives. You are uplifting spirit. You are helping the society not lose in its development. So imitating progress goes two ways. What are your interest capabilities like? Are you paying consistency a visit or you're making it an habit? For me, I prefer to make consistency a habit rather than pay a visit. No. Because when you pay consistency a visit, you are not even able to stand with yourself. There's nothing anybody can identify you with. They don't see you as someone who is stable, either in the mind, or physically, or emotionally, or mentally. Because today, you are for, and the next minute, you are against, and you get confused about who you are. You get people confused about who you are. So challenging times are times that will exist in our life. But are they permanent? No. Are they inevitable? No. You must experience it. You can't escape it. It might come in early times, it might come in later times, but whatever times it comes, you've prepared your mind. You've manifested a knowledge with your mind. This is how stable I want you to be. So your brain picks up on that line and it doesn't malfunction when this time comes. Although there will be temptations to give up, but your mind is there. You've applied all of these things to it, and you've impacted into lives. So it's the habitual ritual of keeping progress in check onto what has been done, what you're about doing. So don't be emotionally attached to anything that you can't feel freedom. It's to check what needs to be reworked. Do you need to get trainings? Do you need to get mentorship? Is it counseling that you need? To build freedom within of this moment you are in. Be the sound like what you think. So it's the way you think that you sound like. There's no pretense about it. Even if you try to pretend that you're not sounding like what you think, it's going to reflect. So we need to be extraordinarily careful during this time so that we can survive delusions, we can imitate progress, and have something to fall back on. Hack your craveness for progress. I know countable times Moments like this came upon me. But did I feel like giving up? Yes. Did I eventually? No. Because it's hard for me to lose that habitual ritual of me keeping check on myself and the works I'm doing and the impact I'm instilling into life. Because after I've experienced that adventure, I need to give back. And the best way to give back is to impact. Is to educate. 
even when you give monetary resources to people try to educate them on the intelligence of it the intelligence of managing it the intelligence of ma uplifting their spirit the intelligence of speaking up when you have any problem that is eating you up inside when you have challenging times don't seclude in that corner don't box yourself up seek for help relate with people don't feel like you're alone understand better that these are faces that you need to pass through but you don't need to sit there and make it your comfort zone in spite of ta challenging times imitate progress by being consistent to do improvement and keep track of it and to buttress the whole of my points the goal of today's discussion is are you doing better how best have you improved how best are you feeling now do you identify yourself are you loving yourself how impactful are you how do you want to be celebrated no matter how much we don't think about it or we choose not to care about it we all want to be celebrated we all want to be recognized we all want to be identified but with what how how do we choose to be celebrated how do we choose to be recognized how do we choose to be identified is by doing better because after these challenges are done and are gone you want to know if you're doing better you want to know if you are okay you want to know if you are in the right safe state of mind so this is what you need to understand about yourself this is what you need to understand that you have to keep check on you are your own person first you need to protect and take care of yourself and don't forget your mind manifests what your brain feeds on be protective of how you project your mind be protective of how you process your mind be protective of how you show your mind to possibilities too because that's the workstation your brain picks up from i hope you enjoyed today's episode on keep me off it you can always have a replay of this episode and every other one on this channel and please don't forget to subscribe and share among your loved ones and also follow us on our instagram page keep me off it let's continue the conversation in the comment section until i come your way next time have a fabulous moment.